13. It wasn't too much later that Lulu could see that she was nearly out of the forest. She was happy that soon she would be with her mom and her dad. But along with feeling happy, she was also feeling sad when she thought of the brontosaurus she'd left behind. As a matter of fact, she pictured the poor lonely dinosaur so clearly in her mind that it almost seemed he was standing there, just outside of the forest, waiting for her. And he was. Was Lulu shocked? You bet. What? 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 She asked. Are you doing here, Mr. B? I found a shortcut, the brontosaurus replied. <sighs> Lulu smiled, a soft, sweet smile, then shook her head and sighed. And then she said, and even though I'm the person writing this story, I truly don't know why she's saying it in rhyme. Please try to understand, Mr. B, that I can't be your pet. Even though you're the nicest brontosaurus I ever met. And if you take me away with you, I'll keep on running back home every chance that I get. Not a bad rhyme, though that last line's a little lumpy. I already figured that out while I was waiting for you, the brontosaurus told Lulu. I do understand that you can't be my pet. But please understand that I can't be yours either. Lulu, well, Lulu understood and the brontosaurus understood. It seemed there was only one thing left to do, so they stood there quietly looking at each other for a moment, and then they did it. The brontosaurus bent his long neck till his face was close to Lulu's. He kissed her gently on the cheek and said, Happy birthday, little pet, and goodbye. Lulu put her arms around the brontosaurus's neck. She kissed him gently on the nose and said, Don't be too lonely, Mr. B, and goodbye. Then she slowly walked down the road that would take her home. Then he slowly walked down the road that would take him home. And all Lulu, Lulu, Lulu and the Brontosaurus remembered each other forever. They never ever saw each other again. The maybe end. Chapter 13, again. Wait, I'm really not all that, sh all that sure about this ending. Maybe a little too mushy, a little too sad, but since I'm the person writing the story, I'm writing another ending and you can decide which one you'd rather have. Well, Lulu understood and the Brontosaurus understood that neither of them could be the other's pet, but why should that mean that they had to say goodbye? Come with me and I'll give you a piece of my birthday cake, said Lulu. I'd like that, the dinosaur said. May I give you a ride? And Lulu arrived at her house riding happily on the back of the brontosaurus. When her mom and her dad heard the noise of a dinosaur clomping into their yard, they remembered Lulu, and they remembered her birthday. Lucky for all, her cake had already been made. Don't worry, he isn't my pet, Lulu said. He was only going to stay here for a piece of cake and a glass of lemonade. But he's kind of a lonely guy, and I would like to invite him back for Thanksgiving dinner. From that time on, the brontosaurus came to Lulu's house for her birthday, Thanksgiving, and the 4th of July. And sometimes she visited his house, though, she, since she didn't like eating leaves, she always brought a suitcase of pickle sandwiches. On one very special birthday, she not only invited her friend, the, di the brontosaurus, but also the snake, and the tiger, and the bear. And the brontosaurus noticed that whenever Lulu asked anyone for anything, she always said, please. The end. Maybe. Chapter 13, yet again. Hmm. Still not totally satisfied. I'm going to try once more because I think I need to answer certain questions like, were Lulu's mom and her dad worried sick when she didn't come home that night? Have they bought her a present for her birthday? Did she completely stop being a pain and turn into play? And how did all that stuff fit in her suitcase? I'm going to answer these questions, and when I'm done, you will have your choice of three different endings. Well, Lulu understood, and the Brontosaurus understood that though they couldn't be pets, 
they could be friends. So Lulu invited the brontosaurus back to her house for some birthday cake and introduced him to her mom and her dad. They hadn't been waiting and worrying and wondering where she was because they had fallen asleep sipping their tea and they didn't open their eyes. Still, the brontosaurus with Lulu riding on his back came clomp, clomp, clomping into their front yard. They gave her a silver necklace for her birthday. She sang them a whole new brontosaurus song. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, didn't get a bronto, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, didn't get a bronto, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. It sure looks like you've brought one home, Lulu's mom said to Lulu. Can we still say no? You can't have one, said her dad. And both of them waited for Lulu to screech and throw herself down on the floor and kick her heels and wave her arms in the air. Except she didn't. What happened to the screeching? asked her quite astonished mom. And her dad asked, what about throwing yourself on the floor? Lulu replied, very dignified. I'm one year older today, and I'm not doing that kid stuff anymore. And she says a very nice please, said the brontosaurus. After the cake and the lemonade, the dinosaur said goodbye, but he would return for many holidays visits. Sometimes the snake and tiger and bear came too. Although she kept getting older, Lulu never turned into perfect. She still, though, less and less often, sometimes she reached and forgot about please, though she never again in her life said poo on you. But she mainly wasn't a pain, and the brontosaurus was mainly not lonely anymore. As for how all that stuff fit into Lulu's suitcase, I'm sorry to say that I don't have a clue. I am, after all, just the person who's writing this story. The end.